So um, as we see oh, NGOs and corporations engaging in shared value partnerships, um, I'll mention three trends or, or uh, three requirements, if you will, that I think are really critical for NGOs to be thinking about. The first one is about the experience, the skills, and the mindset of the individuals who engage. And you know, I think it may seem a little bit cliche to say it's all about the people, right? I mean, we always say that, uh, but it really is in this case because what we're talking about is pretty cutting edge. What we're talking about can often be fairly uncomfortable, and I'll, I'll um, share a few examples um, in each of these. So, uh, we worked a few years ago with Eli Lilly and Company, a major pharmaceutical company, and Population Services International (PSI), which is a is a large NGO, as many of you know. You know, there's folks from PSI in the forum here as well in India. Uh, and specifically on the issue of diabetes. So uh, Lilly is a major manufacturer of, of, diabetes, uh, of insulin that treats diabetes. India has more than 30 million people who've been diagnosed with diabetes. So it's a huge population with diabetes, you know, larger than the entire population of some small countries. And Lilly recognized that um, they, there was a huge opportunity for them to be um, selling insulin profitably to other segments of the population that they weren't addressing, and while doing that, helping to improve and save lives. And so that's where the intersection of Lily's interest and PSI's interest came together. But the one key reason why we were able to form that partnership is about the individual people who are involved. It's about the people who are working at PSI who were very comfortable working with the private sector, again, as long as it aligned with their mission. It's about using um, processes and terminology like um, ROI and cost efficiency that gives a pharmaceutical company like Lily the comfort that, okay, these guys I can work with, I know what they're talking about. It was also about the, the person at Eli Lilly, Tracy Sims, the Global Health Senior Advisor who we work with. And while Tracy had um, most of his experience in the private sector at Lilly, he also understood what some of the, uh, the limitations of were, of the, the company going in just by itself. He could envision why bringing in a nonprofit partner like PSI would be helpful to the world. And I think, again, having that mindset, being able to cross that boundary is critically important. So that's the first one about people. The second one I'll mention is about new structures. So what do I mean by that? Another example. Um, Save the Children and GSK, GlaxoSmithKline, another major pharmaceutical company, recently entered into a, a partnership. And the goal of that partnership is to save lives of a million of the poorest children of the world. Right? So pretty ambitious. What's interesting about this is it, it could have been a philanthropic engagement. right? And GSK could have said, here you go, save the children. Here's a check for you know pick your, pick your number. Um, you, you we're funding you to go do your programming. You put our logo on your brochures. That's not the approach that they took. The approach that they took is very much of a mutual uh, beneficial relationship. So uh, GSK has created an R and D pediatric advisory board, and Save actually sits on that board. And the reason they brought in Save is because of the uh, the deep understanding. Uh, that Save the Children has in working with these populations. What are the needs and demands of these populations? What types of channels do we need to use? And how can we, again, serve that market? And they're working on issues like vaccine delivery, healthcare worker training, and developing a low-cost nutritional product. Uh, they're starting in the DRC and Kenya and looking at some other countries as well. So again, it's a very new and different structure where, uh, in, in terms of how they've designed the partnership. And the third one I'll mention is about intentionality. And I spent quite a bit of time in my first panel talking about this as well. Um, there's a pharmaceutical company we're working with right now where they've engaged in partners in a very traditional way. So they work with patient advocacy groups and they'll push information out. Right? And this is about creating awareness around certain diseases, hopefully helping the, the company in the long run as well. Nothing wrong with that, that's great. But what, what they're coming to realize now is we're not doing enough of the pulling information in. And this is the, the same GSK type relationship where you're actually, the company is using the nonprofit partner to understand about new markets. Um, and it, it both from a company's perspective and the NGO's perspective, these won't happen by by default, you actually have to intentionally design it. You have to address some pretty tough questions. So if you're a nonprofit, you have to address questions um, such as how do we feel about helping a company 
make profits or reduce their costs? How do we feel about that? Um, which industries and companies do we feel most align with our own mission? How can we ensure fidelity to our mission if we become business partners to corporations? What does that mean? And these are pretty tough questions, and it requires NGOs, again, to take time out. It requires them to look at qualitative and quantitative data, do some benchmarking, talk to some external stakeholders, and develop some tools. So those are the three themes that I see as being very important, that the people and their mindset need structures and having the intentionality to move in this new direction.